is up, people? This is me, Spec Cool Football 24 here. I'm currently playing as Delhi Football 14, and I gotta say, the updated roster for this game is pretty damn good. But not only is this a good enough reason as to why I'm playing this game, I'm actually gonna give the mock draft to certain players that who I think the Eagles will be going after in the draft. Now, I'll count this as a 1A, 1B situation for the first draft pick, and the same thing can be said for the second and third rounds, depending on what the Philadelphia Eagles are gonna do in the offseason. This is where the picks will all lie in. Now, this is a 1A situation. If the Philadelphia Eagles decide to keep Sam Bradford, then I can see the Philadelphia Eagles going offensive lineman in the draft. I see the Philadelphia Eagles picking with the first round is Jack Conklin. Note the note the way how this Eagles schedule is going to turn out. To be honest with you, I see the Eagles losing the, the losing the rest of the rest of the games of the season in order to get them to at least around the eighth, seventh pick of the draft, or probably the fifth pick of the draft, which is a damn solid number if you're going to be picking a solid player. So I see them getting Jack Conklin out of out of the draft. Uh, uh, I'm looking at him through NCAA 14 right now, and I got to say the overall ratings couldn't be more more perfect to show off a guy like him, especially after what I just saw from him on Saturday versus Ohio State. The dude is a run-blocking monster, and do take heed. We do need some run blockers, right? This guy is the definition of that. His run block rating is a 94. His impact blocking rating is a 93. And take heed that this stands true as of right now. This dude, like I said before, he's a run blocking monster. I looked at it at the Ohio State game. Oh, my goodness. This dude was, like, creating so many holes for the running back. It's not even funny, man. It's not even funny. This dude, I can see out of the first round that the Philadelphia Eagles will be picking. Now... If it goes to, let's say, 1B situation, if the Eagles decide to get rid of Sam Bradford, on top of that, they should get rid of uh, Mark Sanchez as well. I can see the Philadelphia Eagles going out with the 1B situation and getting uh, Paxton Lynch. There you go. I see him getting Paxton Lynch from Memphis. He's the, like In terms of Chick Kelly and his offense, he's the most perfect quarterback out of that draft. The most perfect. Now, there's actually two quarterbacks I can see the Eagles going for, but in different picks. For the first round, it would go to Paxton Lynch because the dude is six, what, six, 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 seven. This dude can obviously see the whole field. Seriously, man, this guy, this guy can see the whole field. I mean, like, if this was quarterback, if this was the QB vision from Madden, he'll probably get at least a, a, a solid, a solid vision because of his height alone. He should be able to see these defenses, and he should be able to. And, and and if he can't see a wide receiver that can get open, he'll take off with, with his feet as well. That's one other thing I like about him is that he's mainly a pocket passer. So don't let those reports like Mel Kiper Jr. or Ty Mache or any of the guys from NFL.com basically tell you that this guy's a mobile quarterback. He's a scrambler. He is far from it. This guy will take off when he needs to, or when it breaks down, or when yeah, when he needs to, or when he's asked to. Or, of course, like I said, when a, when a play breaks down and, like, he needs to get more time for the wide receivers to get open or give them more time. But other than that, he's a pocket-passing quarterback. Great great pocket presence, too. Great pocket presence. I mean, he has a solid arm. He has an X of a cannon for an arm. The guy's main comparison out of this is, is Joe Flacco, which I have no problem with that. I have no problem with, with this guy uh, being like Joe Flacco, willing to sling the ball down the field. Because I've seen plenty of that in his highlights. He loves to sling the ball down the field and with precise accuracy as well. So that's what I can see from him. He's the, he's the best comparison is Joe Flacco, but in terms of running, he's someone entirely different. I mean, like, yeah, he's someone entirely different. So I can see him going out the first round. Now, if it came to the different situation, the Eagles still needed a quarterback, I can see him getting Trayvon Boykin. And he's not going to be a first-round talent either. He's at best going to be at the third round because of his struggles as of late. And on top of that, he got hurt. So, if the Eagles are still willing to get to get a quarterback, I would say get Trayvon Boykin in the third round. Because he's the safest bet, and he also knows the Chip Kelly scheme as well. So, those, those are two quarterbacks that I would see Chip getting if it came to that situation. Now, let's go on to the second round. The second round, again, it all depends on what will happen in free agency. I can see the Eagles getting at wide receiver Josh Doxson in the second round. And how And how would you say? 
easy because the the Eagles are gonna take that third round pick from the Lions and they're probably gonna trade it for a mid round pick at least around tenth tenth to eighth position. So that's what I can see happening. I mean, I mean like not 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 tenth to eighth. Uh, I can see it be a tenth to a eighteenth position in the draft, and that's where I would see the Eagles pick up Josh Doxson. Because there's because there there is some teams that that do, does need a wide receiver, but there are some other wide receivers that who I also see the Eagles picking that are better in this situation, like like the like the Le, yeah Laquan Treadwell. I could see teams getting him that do a best comparison by far is Des Bryant, and for a good reason. The dude is tall as hell. Like he's not tall as hell, but he's tall enough to where he can get the jump balls. Again, another receiver that I wouldn't mind the Eagles picking. So. There's that situation, you know, you know, with the wide receivers. I can see the Philadelphia Eagles really getting wide receiver basically both ways. If but it really comes down to if the Eagles are gonna get a wide receiver in the free agency because this is the thing. If they don't get a wide receiver in free agency, the next best thing is get one in the draft because there's like there's a couple solid receivers in this draft. It's not as solid as it was last year, where, you know, you see Nelson Aguilar, Amari Cooper. But other than that, you know, there's no other wide receivers in this list that's really that good besides those two wide receivers personally in my opinion well there is there is like Coleman from Baylor and then there's a there's a what the hell is that one there's Fuller from Notre Dame but those guys are not second round materials they're they're at best third round they really are they're at best third to fourth round wide receivers the Eagles are still trying to address that position you know, there you go. Those are the, those are the wide receivers who I can see getting as Josh Doxson and La- Laquan Treadwell. Mainly Josh Doxson because he's basically the old old Beckham of this draft. So I can see the Eagles trading that Lions pick, and they'll probably trade their own pick. Who knows? Their own third round pick and get him out of there. But if it's just the Lions pick, which I'm hoping for, but you know it's not likely, I can definitely see them getting you know 10th to 18th pick position. Now for the third round. I can see the Eagles actually grabbing another lineman, and I can see them getting the third, second lineman. That would be, I saw it on his mock draft list from Green Green Nation, which I agree with. I can see them getting Jason Spriggs out of Indiana. There you go. That's that guy. Then he's another guy that's a run blocking machine. You know, the Eagles trying to get some run blockers. There you go. They're, those are your two run blockers that would help DeMarco Murray, and they would help, you know, basically every every running back position. You know, every 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 running back that's in that position, you know, Darren Sproles, Ryan Matthews, DeMarco Murray, I would get both those guys coming up. Jason Spriggs and, and, uh, yeah, Jason Spriggs and, God damn it, I keep forgetting his name. Uh, shit. Let me go back again. Yeah, basically, yeah, get Jason Spriggs and get Jack Conklin. If it came down to a 1A situation, then yes, get Jack Conklin. But if it came down to a 1B situation, then yeah, the Eagles would definitely need to get. I mean, like he's a lock either way. Jason Spriggs is a lock either way because they have to address that that position at the very least. So the way how I see it, that's who I see the Eagles get picking up out of the third round. But you know, I really hope the Eagles actually decided to keep Bradford so we can actually have a solid offensive line unit and not really have to give up much. Now, granted, we'll have to trade for Bradford. We're well, not trade. We'll have to resign Bradford to a. You know, a one-year deal, which I would like. You know, not too high, but other than that, you know, I'll see our offensive lineman being solidified. If Chip goes with two linemen in a one-A situation, you know, but at least he'll address it in a one-B situation. Four, fifth, sixth, and seventh round picks. To be quite honest with you, I honestly don't care about unless if they're gonna go and get Coleman from Baylor, which I'll probably see him being gone by third round. Same for Fuller. I see both of them being gone by third round, but you know that's all. That's all there is to it. If the Eagles actually do get either one of them in the fourth round, then at least we can't say that we can't say that they didn't address the position for getting rid of Riley Cooper and you know, uh, you know Riley Cooper and Miles Austin, who are both utterly trash and need to be you know released when this season is over. If the Eagles are dressing for agency and let's say getting Alshon Jeffries, which who I definitely want to be on his team, but I don't see happening, then, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm definitely not complaining. I mean, that, that's one way to address it. Another way to address it would be getting another wide receiver. And people are wondering about the cornerback position? No. No, because I'm giving Eric Rowe and Ja'Cory Shepard a shot. I am not going to do it. I'm not going to bother 
having to go up there and just, you know, pick another cornerback just because we already have two corners, one that wasn't able to prove himself due to a torn ACL, another one who didn't really prove himself because a dumbass defensive coordinator decided to not give him any time. So really, for me, it's like that. I mean, like, yo, everyone was wondering, like, oh, uh, there's a reason why EJ Biggs is not in the field and Eric Rowe is and yada, yada. I mean, like, it lets you, it t- you know, tells you a lot about him. Well, I could say the exact same thing about, you know, you know, let's see, uh, Nolan Carroll or whoever it is. Nolan Carroll was b- basically, he was not in the field up until week 17. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of them that I can see. You know, EJ Biggers is not that good, but then again, you know, you have to give Eric Rowe his shot. And the way I see it, he's going to earn his shot next season. Same for Ja'Cory Shepard. Both of them are going to earn their shot next season to prove what corners they really are. And on top of that, I see the Eagles getting a new defensive coordinator because Billy Davis, I've been calling for his head since day one, and I hope it comes to fruition this offseason. The Eagles have to get rid of him. They have to get rid of him. They have to get a defensive coordinator that doesn't do man all the time. That man coverage shit don't be working. Why? Because teams will exploit it. And they'd be like, oh, okay, all we're going to do is call short corner routes. All we're going to do is call short corner routes. That's all there is that you need to do to hurt the Eagles. You don't need to call no deep passes unless unless if you really see them getting beat. But other than that, like, yo, that'd be it. So, yeah, for way, that's the way how I see it, yo. The Eagles, they, 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 they have to get rid of them. They have to get someone that's at least better than Billy Davis. There's no way you can tell me that these defensive coordinators coming up are not better than Billy Davis. There's no way. So... You know, man, that's how I see the draft being played out. I see the Eagles going 1A part, which is Lyman. Yeah, 1A draft part, which is Lyman, wide receiver, and Lyman. 1B, which is quarterback, wide receiver, and Lyman. You know, either way, in this situation, I win. So, you know, either they keep Bradford or they get Paxton Lynch. That's how I see the NFL draft uh, going on for Philadelphia Eagles in 2016. I will catch you guys later. Peace.